And this is how we make our tortillas. Henrietta Anton has been making tortillas the traditional way here on the Gila River Reservation since she was a little girl. Seven decades ago, she and other Pima Indians here raised their own food staples. Squash, different kinds of beans, corn. That's how we lived off the, off the fields. Henrietta's generation may have been the last to practice traditional subsistence farming. For millennia, the Pima lived off the land here, just south of Phoenix, farming the desert with water from the Gila River. Interest upriver began to siphon water for their own uses in the late 1800s, and by the early 20th century, little water from the Gila reached the Pima's fields. Now a dry bed is all that remains of the river. But water is coming back. In 2004, after nearly a century of litigation, the Pima were awarded nearly 160,000 acre feet of water. It's the largest tribal water settlement in U.S. history. Now, four years later, the water is starting to flow through a series of new canals. The bigger farmers, they're the ones that are going to be growing, the, using the water for a profit. But ourselves, we're trying to, you know, do it for the healthy, the healthy aspect and, and carry on the tradition. At the District 5 Cooperative Gardens, some Pima are demonstrating how to grow traditional foods with the returning water. Oh, that was a good one. A turn back to fresh vegetables, squash, corn, and beans could help combat the diabetes that affects nearly half of the adult population here. For decades, scientists have been studying the Pima, who have the highest rates of diabetes of any population on Earth. Many suffer from obesity and heart disease as well. One theory is that they have a thrifty gene, that helped their ancestors store calories during lean times. A century ago, a traditional Pima diet might have been 15% fat, and diabetes was relatively unknown here. When my grandfather passed away, he never had diabetes because he ate of the land, I guess. But when water stopped flowing to the Pima's fields, their lives and health changed. When the water went down, it really affected a lot because we could not, we could not eat what we grew, that was, the, that was the best we could ever eat our own. By the mid-20th century, the Pima, like many Americans, were eating a diet heavy in sugar, processed foods, and fat. It's called fry bread, and it's just flour and uh, a little bit of uh, shortening and salt and baking powder is what makes it rise. I don't think it's that good for us, but we eat it. <laughs> Georgina now cooks her fry bread in oil instead of lard, and she's not counting on homegrown foods alone for better health. Ready, set, go. Elders like Georgina and One, Henrietta, both of whom two, have diabetes, regularly three, exercise. Four, five. And there are efforts to educate the younger generation as well. We talked about McDonald's. I'm not going to eat large fries. I'm going to order what? Small. Small. Or medium. Medium. A small, no, or no small, fries. or just a small, small or no fries. Yes. But eating the right foods can be tough on a reservation with no real green grocers, and few young people know anything about gardening or farming any longer. I tell these farmers that they need to get this man together and teach him how to irrigate. That's the plan at the community garden, which is still small and largely symbolic. If a family here in this community can make a garden, get everybody involved, grandkids and everybody else go out there, clean it up, weed it, you know, and get some exercise. That would probably kind of what you call it, this diabetes that a lot of people talk about here in this community. Everyone knows that old habits are hard to break, but the return of water presents an opportunity for change. If the people want it to happen, it'll happen. But if they don't work on it, they're not going to get it. Then it'll just be wasting our water again which we don't want to waste our water.